So every time we get together, we're going to hear from God and his word and someone, maybe me, but maybe others, that are going to preach a message from God's word to us that I believe the Bible is the most relevant and most helpful book that there is. And so we're always going to open that. We're always going to look to see what God has to say to us and how it's going to change our life. So I'm going to preach a message now, a short message now about called The Mission Goes With You. The Mission Goes With You. So if you could go with someone somewhere, where would you go? Okay, if you could go with someone somewhere, where would you go? Would you go to the beach? Anybody got to go to the beach? No. Would anybody go to the mall? There's the nice big Park City Mall right across the street. Anybody go to the mall? No. Anybody go to the movies? Come on, yeah, this is a great movie theater to go watch a movie in. Anybody? A couple people, one person. All right. How about going to the mountains? It's hunting season. Right? All right, a couple of people. So when I asked the question, right, where would you go with somebody, where would you go? Oftentimes when you think about this question, it's more important who you're going with than where you are. My wife, Alicia, loves going to the beach. I'm not a huge beach guy. Um, I don't like putting sunscreen on all the time, but that's what you got to do, and you enjoy the the water and you have fun doing that but I don't like it particularly much but Alicia really does and so if I'm with her then hey I'll go to the beach I'll go anywhere with her and so we're gonna talk about that idea a little bit today but we're here right now as a result of someone who lived 2,000 years ago and this someone did something really important that changed the course of history and he also said something really important as well and that person is Jesus Christ who we believe was God who became a man and that he lived a perfect life and he died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin he was buried and he rose again the third day and anyone who believes in him and that includes you can have your sin forgiven and be given eternal life and because of this person and what he's done for us, we have a mission. We are here for a reason. You are still here for a reason. If you believe in Jesus, you would think if that's all life was about, believing in Jesus, that you just do it, you trust in him, and then God would take you to heaven, right? Your, your life's done. You, you made the, the big decision. You, you, God worked in your life, and now it's time to go to heaven, right? But you didn't do that. And so God has a reason for that. And so think about, logically, what is one thing that you cannot do in heaven? You can't do this in heaven. Any thoughts? Shout it out. Share, share the gospel. You can't sin in heaven. There's no sin in heaven. There's no tears. There's no crying. There's no pain, there's no disease, there's no suffering, there's no wrong decisions, there's no hurting other people, there's no sin in heaven, but we know right here and now that is reality. There's pain, there's difficulty, there's heartache, there's, we make bad decisions all of the time. And so if that is us right now, that means, I think, if we can't do anything about that in heaven, then I think there's something we can do about that right now. And that, as Jordan shared, is we get the opportunity to tell people about Jesus who did something about our sin problem, our humanity problem, the, the thing that we all suffer with and we all deal with. And so we have this mission to go and tell other people about this new reality, this new life that you can have. But... And let me just say, if you're not a believer in Jesus yet, and you're here with us, and you have questions, you, like, I believe there's no other place, no better place for you to be than right here, watching online right now, because we really want to get to know you, hear your story, 
answer your questions and point you to Jesus who, and, his, and God's word, who I believe has answers for you and the things that you're questioning, your things that you're wondering about, the things that you are facing. And so logically, thinking about if we can't do that in heaven and we should be doing it now, like I think that's a pretty good reason. But it's not just a logical conclusion. It's Jesus told us this. He, he said that this was the reason, this was the purpose, this was the mission that he gave us. And this is what he said before he went and ascended into heaven. It says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. See, this is the mission. This is the reason. This is why, if you're a Jesus follower, this is why you are here, to accomplish what God, what Jesus has given us to do. And, and in just a minute, we're going to talk about the go word. Go. Going. But first, I want you to be aware that that's not the main action. That's not the main command. That's not the main verb in this mission that God gives us. It's not to go. The main word is to make disciples. That is the main command, the main mission that God gives to us. So what is a disciple? A disciple is a follower of Jesus, someone who believes in Jesus and is their life is being transformed by Jesus and his teachings. And so who can be a disciple? Well, according to Jesus in this verse, anyone, all the nations can be a disciple. The whole world, people that look like us and don't look like us, people that speak our language and people who don't speak our language, all the nations is the target of who can be a disciple. Now, what do we do first? Well, Jesus says we baptize them. Baptism is a celebration of one's faith in Jesus Christ. So we share the good news of what Jesus has done. People believe in that, and we celebrate that through baptism. And I can't wait to celebrate our first baptisms as Connect Us Church. It's going to be exciting. But then it doesn't just stop there. Then we do what? We teach them. Teach them to obey everything that Jesus commands. So it's not about just believing the right things. It's allowing those right beliefs to change the way that we live. And so that's what we want to help those who trust and believe in Jesus to do. And then all of that sounds like a big deal. Like that's a lot of work. That's a lot to think about, right? And so the good news is, is that you don't have to do that on your own. I don't have to do that on my own. Jesus said, I am with you always. We need to rely on God's power to do it. Jesus is with us while we are accomplishing this mission. So this is the mission of a Jesus follower. And as we talked about earlier today, God has given you specific abilities, specific experiences, specific gifts that only you have to accomplish a mission, an aspect of this mission that only you can accomplish. And so as a church, we want to rally around you and what God has called you to do, what God has gifted you to do, and we want to help you accomplish that. Like, I don't want to just plug you into some box and say, hey, we need help over here, go do that. No, I want the box to be shaped by your unique person, your unique abilities, and what God is doing in your life. So as we conclude our time together this morning, I want to give you some verses and some history of how this mission that Jesus gave his followers, how it went. You know, if he gave this mission to the, some people 2,000 years ago, then how did, they, how did we end up here today? And that's what I want to tell you about as, as we talk about this, because <coughs> it's all about this idea of as you go, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. Yeah. So going is an action, but it's more of, it's not, like I said, it's not the main command. It's a assumed thing. Like, you are going somewhere right now in your life. You're going to your job. You're going to your family. 
you're going to vacation, you're going to the mountains to hunt, like many of you raised your hands, right? You're going somewhere, and the thought is, as you go, this is your mission. Someone say, as you go. As you go. As you go. So where did this mission start? When well, John 20, verse 19, after Jesus gave this command to his disciples, it says that the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. So the mission, as you go, to share the good news of what Jesus done, started behind locked doors. Doors that were locked from the inside because they were afraid to go. They were afraid to go and accomplish this mission that God gave them. And you know what? This mission is a little scary. <laughs> like if you're, you're thinking about, okay, what does this mean for me? And I'm not sure if I want to get in on this because that seems like a big, a big deal. Well, you're not alone in thinking that. The first people that heard it right from Jesus' mouth thought the exact same thing. This was a little scary. So, I wonder, what is locked up in your life because of fear right now? Like, are you locking yourself into a situation or a pattern of thinking or a way of feeling, and you're locking yourself in there because you're afraid of what might be outside? That's what the disciples of Jesus we're dealing with. And let me just tell you, do not let fear hold you back. Do not let fear hold you back because God is with you. Jesus is with you and he will give you the power to walk into that thing that is going to make a difference in our world and in our life. Because Jesus did exactly that as we see in this passage the people were locked up from the inside because of fear. And Jesus showed up right there in that moment, in that fear. Jesus just walked through that locked door and showed up. And I believe that he's going to show up in your life and in our lives of our friends and our community. And so, right before Jesus ascended into heaven as the story goes on, Luke, the author of the book of Acts, he wrote this. He says, Jesus said this, but, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so you might be feeling afraid, but who is with you? Jesus is with you through the person he sent the Holy Spirit to give you power to do whatever it is that God is calling you to do, to accomplish the mission of making disciples. And so here's the main point of this morning. He says this, he says, because I'm with you, you can have the power to accomplish the mission I have given you. Do not be afraid. That's what Jesus told his disciples. And I think he's telling us the same thing. Because I am with you, you can have the power to accomplish the mission I've given you. Do not be afraid. And so the rest of the book of Acts outlines how this mission was accomplished. You see the mission? Remember the mission in Acts 1.8? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. That's where they were. Judea and Samaria were the surrounding areas communities, the state, the, the, the area around, and then the ends of the earth all over the place, right? So here's how this mission was accomplished, and I'm going to give you a couple verses quickly as we go through that. In Acts chapter 3, we see how it starts in Jerusalem. Peter and John healed the man at the temple. Then Peter said, silver or gold have I not, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, rise up and walk. So Peter and John, disciples of Jesus, Go and see a guy at the temple, the big, beautiful place that God said his presence was going to be in Jerusalem. And some of you maybe have been there before. Like, that's a literal place. That's where this started. 
and the disciples meet a guy right there and change his life forever. He didn't have money to give him, but he gave him something so much better. And so maybe the problem that came next in Acts 6-1 is, is as time went on, we read that the disciples were still in Jerusalem. They hadn't yet taken steps to get and accomplish this entire mission that Jesus gave them that they first were very scared of and locked themselves in a room. A couple chapters later, they're still in Jerusalem. And so the, the saying or the story that goes is that if you don't do the mission of Jesus in Acts 1-8, then Acts 8-1, the opposite of those numbers, happens. And this is what Acts 8-1 says. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all the believers except the apostles were what? Scattered through the regions of where? Judea and Samaria, exactly where God wanted them to go, and they hadn't yet gone there. So God caused something to happen to get them to go, the people to go and accomplish this mission. God is at work. He is accomplishing his mission, and it's going to happen. Like He's going to make things happen so they get the people to where he needs them to be. And one of the examples of that person going and doing his mission was Philip. And in Acts 8, 5, Philip went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Good job, Philip. You finally got out of the, the little box that you were comfortable with, your little house, your little place, your, your own familiar territory. And now you're starting to take the gospel to people that God really loves and God really wants you to go to. So Philip is going. And then it, it goes into Judea in Acts 9, 31. The church then, this is like a summary statement, then had peace throughout Judea, G Galilee, and Samaria, and it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. And so now we see the, how it's in Judea, it's expanding, finally things are starting to happen. And before you get to the end of the book of Acts, there's a guy, Apostle Paul, who's preaching in Antioch, in Ephesus, and in Rome. So if Jerusalem is down here on the one side of the Mediterranean Sea, Antioch, Ephesus, and Rome, finally it's getting out to the whole world, the whole ends of the earth. And so here we are today, right? And that's what was happening. Do you know how the book of Acts the history of the church that we have for in us in our Bibles, do you know how it ends? In Acts 28, the last verse in the book of Acts, says, for the next two years, Paul, this man who was taking the gospel out into the end or, ends of the earth, lived in Rome at his own expense. He welcomed all who visited him, boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ and no one tried to stop him. See, this was really interesting because everyone was trying to stop Paul his entire life. They were trying to arrest him. They were trying to kill him. And the only way that Paul actually ended up in the place where he eventually wanted to be, Paul wanted to go to Rome. He just never could get there. The way he got there was because they arrested him and Paul said, hold on, you can't do this. I'm a Roman citizen. Put me in a boat and take me to Rome, which was their right as a citizen of Rome and to have a trial in Rome. And so Paul actually ended up where he wanted to go because he was this Roman citizen and he was being arrested. And their ship, even on their way to Rome, was shipwrecked. I mean, this man went through some crazy stuff to finally accomplish the mission that he believed God had given him. And so finally he was in Rome. Finally he was doing what God, he felt like, wanted him to do. And it just really wasn't in the way that he thought it was going to be. And here's, that's how the book ends. And so I wonder, and I ask this question to you, what happened after those two years? Like, Paul was there for two years. That was 2,000 years ago. <laughs> we don't... We don't know more. I mean, we might learn a little bit more from reading um, 
the letters that Paul wrote. We gather a little bit from church history, but we really don't know. We don't know what happened. And do you know why I think that is? Why Luke told the story the way that he told it? Why he ended this book of the Bible the way that he ended it? Because I think what Luke is saying, he's saying, the mission goes with you. Like it's, it's not over. Paul was there for two years, great. Here we are. Here we are. The mission goes with you. So how are we, how are you going to take the good news of what Jesus has done to wherever you go? And as a church, we talk about doing three things to help us accomplish this mission. We want to pray. We want to pray for people and invite God to work in our lives, work in the lives of our friends, of our neighbors, of our community. We want to pray for people because we can't do this without God. We need God's power. We need the Holy Spirit in us or else we're going to be scared locking ourselves in this room and the message isn't going to get out like God wants it to. So we need to pray. And then we need to care for people. We need to share the love of Jesus with people. We need to show people that we love them, that God loves them. And we need to get out and, and meet people and show up in their lives in order to do that. And then we want to share Jesus with them. I mean, people need to know what Jesus did for them. They need to know that he died on the cross to pay the penalty for their sin, that they would, he was buried, and then he rose again the third day. And anyone who believes in him will have eternal life and have a right relationship with God. Like, people need to know that. And when you just say it like that so quick, and it's like, okay, hold on. Like, let's back up. Let's ask some questions. And you're, yeah, you're exactly right. Let's have a conversation. Let's get to know you. Let's see, like, what's your experience? What are you thinking of? And so we want to value all of those things. And so one of the ways that you can share Jesus we talk about this is this way is you can share your experience of Jesus. So like where do you learn about Jesus? Where do you learn, you learn about God? Well, you learn about him and what you're reading through God's word. Well, can you share that with somebody? Maybe you have a group of people you get together with, or groups that meet every week, or, or you're doing your own thing. Maybe you can invite people into that experience where they also can hear and learn about Jesus. Or maybe you can invite them here and they can hear about Jesus in this type of way as well. So that's what we're going to do next Sunday. Next Sunday, we're not going to be here. We are going to be out somewhere, in wherever you go, and we're going to be distributing uh, a thousand door hangers. That's the, the goal for this next two weeks, to invite people back here on d November 15th for our second community interest meeting. And then on November 22nd, we will have our first preview service, which will have music and I'll preach a message and it'll be a little bit more like a quote unquote typical church service, but I don't want to be a typical church either. So um, that's the plan. And we will be starting weekly services, launching weekly services, January 31st. So that's the plan. That's the mission that God has called us to, and I'm excited to see how God is going to work through our lives in these next weeks, this week, next week, and this month to see the mission go forth to wherever you go because the mission goes with you. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for how you are at work in our life and in our community and in our world. Help us to be bold and to know that God you are with us. We might not always have the right words to say. We might not always know how to do it in the most impressive way. But God, we believe that that really doesn't matter. In fact, in many ways, an honest, humble, real, authentic version of God, I just, I trust in this Jesus guy. And he did something for me. He, I wasn't right screwed up, but, but Jesus loved me and he died on the cross and paid for my sin. And I, I don't get it, I don't understand it all, but Lord, I just trust you and I, I believe that. And 
There's something powerful in those moments. So I pray that as we go today to wherever we go, that you would be with us. You would give us the boldness to step out in faith, to share Jesus with whoever we meet. God, give us that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.